This is a stitch along of Designs by Little Bees 6x10 inch mini composition book snap cover. Please visit links below the video to purchase this or similar designs and receive the embroidery file along with a PDF of exact measurements and supplies you'll need for this project.
There's the shorter pocket on that side. I'm using black stabilizer. And there is the longer pocket. Let me see if I can ooh, take you out of there. There you go. So this is the back of my hoop. Um, I did not use a backing on this one. I usually don't. Sometimes I do if it's like really special or fancy. Um, but when I use my black stabilizer, like I don't think that looks bad at all. So I'm not going to go through the trouble of doing that. Um, I do have my, I'm using black cutaway stabilizer as pockets because when you fold it over um, to me it just it's pretty darn sturdy so I'm using that for here's my shorter flap and then here's the longer one if you look at the front of the hoop so your pockets go to here so this is the longer one and here this is the shorter one and when you look at the back of the hoop there are little marks for you to line your uh, pocket up. And I'm using my Wonder Clips to clip it. And then I don't leave it alone. The Wonder Clips, of course, they're not the uh, most surefire or sturdy, um, I guess, reliable thing to use. So when I do this last step, I do watch them. Um, I watch it till like the last you know, 20 seconds or so. So there's my pulling up my bobbin thread so it doesn't cause a nest underneath. Don't pull it, just hold it, kind of semi-talk. I wish I had done the bean stitch detail in yellow, but you live and you learn. Um, I'm using white marine vinyl from Joanne, and I am using um, this Mario fabric is from Walmart. I just got it yesterday, and I just realized, y'all notice, I am so bad at, like, fussy cutting and lining stuff up. So the only time I have Super Mario World on it, it is in the bind in the middle, and over here it's upside down. So clearly I could have thought of that a little better, a little planned a little better. Um, so, yeah, this is white marine vinyl. Um, just from Joanne, or you can get it online, uh, marinevinylfabric.com is a great source for vinyl um, that I've been using for a little while now, um, especially because I like shipping so much more than going to the store. So, you know, I'm just standing here. I'm just watching to see if anything catches or if the pockets come. Because, like I said, I'm using Wonder Clips, and they're not the most sturdy. But I'm just going to stand here anyway, so I don't mind. I'm going to hold this pocket. Just to make sure I can feel it go under there. There you go. And then the next one to look out for is the top of that pocket. Make sure that it, it, it catches. Um, I usually, since I have a multi-needle, I usually like stick my head under it like I'm doing right now. Like you can, hello, do you see me? Um, I usually stick my head under and just look and see if I can see both the pockets. They both caught. Um, they're both looking good. A frog in my throat. And this is the trickiest part of these projects. This is the trickiest part, the pocket. Just because it's under your hoop, you know? And if anything is going to go down, it's going to happen under your hoop. <laughs> Come on, hurry up.
All right, so the most, one of the most important steps of your In The Hoop project, do, 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 we love that sound. Um, one of the most important steps of your In The Hoop project is, oh, that's not what I was trying to do, is before you remove any clips or pins, anything, check while it's in the hoop and make sure everything looks good. You don't have any loops or stitches that you need to go over again and fix. All the satins are correct. Um, look on the back. Looks amazing. My pocket's both caught. Um, the pockets, have you ever used a... Um, a piece of uh, vinyl or whatever and it didn't catch at the edge and then you just whipped it out of the hoop and it's ruined. Um, everything caught, everything is in its place. Now I can remove my clips. And I'm not taking you over to my desk because it is a holy terror right now, but I already did the hardest part. The hardest part of these is making sure the pockets inside are correct. That is the hardest part, just because they're under your hoop and you can't see them and things shift and things move um, and things wrinkle, but this looks great. So all I'm gonna do now, this is the six by 10 version, and that's why I say I did a tutorial on the five by seven version, um, thinking that that's what everybody would want because it's two part, and so it can be you know kind of tricky to wrap your brain around how it works. The six by 10 one, I might end up doing a tutorial on it too. I don't know. I just didn't think I needed to because it's so much easier than the five by seven. It is just simply an outline, an applique, if you want to use it, um, whatever is on the tab, um, whether it's a, a seahorse or a monogram or whatever. And then finally, you put your pockets on and stitch around them. You cut this out. Actually, I will cut it. This is, I mean, believe it or not, it's one of the easiest projects I think that I make. And I really, I know I'm kind of obsessed with them right now. So maybe my thoughts will change after, um, after some time I'm kind of doing a bazillion different styles now. But to me, as far as in the hoop stuff goes, this, the mini notebook covers are the biggest bang for your buck. You know, they're the most impressive versus the work. You know, when you talk about the value of embroidery, if you pay for an embroidery design, you have to think, how long is this gonna take me to stitch out? What materials am I gonna need? Um, do I have to go out and purchase anything special? Uh, what am I gonna do with it? How useful is it? Like all that. For me, in my humble opinion, um, these mini notebook covers are the best value for what you pay, how easy it is, how useful it is. Um, that I, f I find them fun and interesting and exciting. The variation, um, the number of circle, monogram circle notebooks I've seen you guys share in the group has been phenomenal. And a lot of you aren't even monogramming them. You're just putting, um, you're just putting like fussy cutting some of your fabric for the circle or the square. And like I've said probably 50 billion times, you guys impress me so much and you do way more creative work than I do, I think. Um, so here's what I did. Um, I cut all the way around it. Nice and evenly. I used my Kai um, sewing shears. I think they're nine inch, they might be eight. I've had them for about uh, about 13, no, about 11 or 12 years now because I remember I got them in a sewing class uh, before I had any kids and my oldest is 10 and a half. So I've had these scissors. Let me show them to you. See that M? That was because we all wrote our initial on our scissors for this sewing class um, so that we could tell our scissors apart. I've had these for almost 12 years. And they, I, I cut this with them. They are incredible. They're Kai, K-A-I. See, it says right there. I don't know if you can see that. K-A-I. Um, can't recommend these enough. I've had them 12 years. I've never had them sharpened. Okay. Then you open up your notebook, grab your mini composition book. 
I trim a couple of millimeters off the front and back cover of my notebook. I like the way it fits better. It doesn't squish so much in my opinion. Your mileage may vary. Put this side in here, open it up, put that side in there, close it, um, smush it to where they it lines up nice. Then you fold over your tab. You poke a hole in here using your awl, A-W-L, that's your pointy thingy. Poke a hole through there. And then I like to just gently poke through to the fabric. See if you can get it, just gently poke through to the fabric. I'm trying to see where my hand is. <laughs> um, and there, I see it right there. So poke that. Then I usually take my notebook out, uh, poke the hole the rest of the way, and this is really kind of, um, I don't really actually do it that way for my samples because I do so many. Um, I just make a big pile of them and I do it with no notebook inside. I just um, estimate how far it's going to go over. And I'm, I've gotten pretty good at it because I make so many. But if you want to know exact measurements, you can put your notebook inside and do this first. Um, and then you just poke a hole in here. That's the front. Um, another reason why I like to fold it over like this with the notebook in it is because uh, if you open it up and poke a hole, then when you close it, your fabric pulls a little on that hole. Does that make sense? Because it was open when you poke through it, and it's not a lot, but just for, you know, quality assurance, um, I like to close mine first and then poke the holes. Sometimes I don't do it on my samples and it shows because my fabric is pulling really hard. Um, or I, I was just being sloppy that day. So then you install your snaps right there. And remember, this snap needs to go backwards. Your cap goes here and your uh, stud or socket goes here, right? Because remember, it's got to snap, okay? Can you see that? So inside goes like this. Outside goes on top, okay? Your cap piece, that's the shiny piece. And then you just install your snaps. And then you're ready to go. I feel like I was going to say one other thing and I already forgot it. I don't know. Anyway, maybe I'll think of it later. Anyway, I just, I had to stitch this out anyway today and I thought I would just do a live and show it. Um, my phone was actually charged up for the first time in um, the history of my life. So I thought I would just set my phone up and let you watch it. Um, I know I like to watch or listen to things sometimes when I'm working. So I hope you enjoyed watching it stitch out and I hope that um, this, at least the end part of this where I was talking, helps you with some of the instruction. Oh, I think I know what I was going to say. Two things. Someone said the other day that they couldn't afford a tabletop press right now, and um, but their hand press would not reach the inside of the notebook and asked if they could fold over. Yes, honey, yes you can. You can fold all day. As long as you're not breaking anything, you can manipulate your project as much as you want to get it into like the throat of that um, hand press. Um, so, and the other thing I was gonna say is it doesn't matter which you install um, the uh, stud or socket, or if you are a, um, a home improvement or tool type person, they call it like a male and female piece. Um, but I do want to show you, this is the cap of your snaps. You see how it's round and shiny? And then it also comes with, excuse me, that was a weird sound I just made. Um, it also comes with a stud and socket. That's what they call it on the cam, snaps.com website. So you want to put one right here. Another tip if you're using a hand press, what I love to do when I'm not biting my fingernails, as I have pretty much bitten my thumbnails off the past few days dealing with website issues, I'm sorry. Um, these are still pretty good. Um, if you're using a hand press and you're having a problem mashing all the way down, uh, you can try long prong snaps, but one thing I really recommend, and I do this even though I have a tabletop press, I still do this. When I put the cap in, I squish my project around the prong. I take my fingernails, if I don't have any thumbnails, I'll do it with my index finger, whatever. Smash that prong through, okay? That just gives your press a little less work. Uh, I've heard great things about doing that. I've also heard, and this is something I haven't tried personally, I've also heard that if you will use your hand press and smash the snap, and then release, turn it, and then smash it again, 
that that I've heard that people get good good results with that as well. Um, you can also try long prongs, and if you make a lot of these and you have a few extra bucks to make the investment, a tabletop press is absolutely amazing. Um, so the cap goes on the outside tab, but on the other side, the cap goes on the inside. Okay, see that? It's nice and smooth, so your notebook just goes over it. And then I will take it over to my tabletop press and I will install a stud and socket on either side. Doesn't matter which, they both, they, they smush together. Um, and that'll be it. Yay! So if you have any questions, just comment below. I'll try to keep um, my mind on the comments. I have so many Facebook tags that like, it's like, I don't know why I just took these out. I have so many Facebook tags, it's hard to keep up, but... Um, surely someone knows the answer to your question if you want to just comment on the video. Um, and I hope you enjoyed that. And that was just a little way for me to say hi today while I'm working. I will have this out probably later today. I don't know. It depends on when I can take pictures. I'm really behind on my pictures. So anyway, um, I will, I will see you in the next video and I'll chat with you in the group. Bye.